The of agricultural machinery held at Tahuna Park, Dunedin, is led by an eight-horse team of Clydesdales hauling an old-time wool wagon. The old-fashioned transport also includes the Phaeton great-grandmama paid her calls in and the homely buggy and gig. In spite of bad weather, crowds fill every vantage point to watch the pageant. The old single-furrow plough leads the way for its up-to-date counterpart, the three-furrow mechanised plough, and close behind is a modern potato digger. This grass seed broadcaster makes short work of seed sowing for the farmer, and following it is the new type of four-row ridger. Harvesting machinery of early vintage was shown, like this side delivery mower, and the first reaper which replaced the scythe in 1831, when men walked behind and gathered and tied the cut grain. A far cry from the modern header harvesters, which cut, thresh and bag the crop. The cavalcade shows a century's agricultural progress in this final event of Otago's centennial year. <music> Cavity wall construction is a new building process recently evolved in this country, and this factory at Auckland is getting ready for busy times ahead. The method is to form concrete sheets by pouring concrete onto a reinforcing of welded wire mesh. To produce a true sheet, free from air bubbles and other irregularities, the mixture is put onto an electrical vibrator, which agitates it, causing it to settle down into a closely bound mass three quarters of an inch thick. Vibrating only takes a matter of a minute, and when it's over, the tray goes on to join others for forced hardening by baking in a kiln. After about 12 hours, the kiln is opened up. This process of baking by steam is quite novel, and it's a great time saver. On to the construction stage, and here's another new feature, pre-molded foundation boxing, which bonds itself to the freshly poured concrete, saving timber, time, and trouble. The concrete sheets go into position. They're easily handled, and no special building equipment is required. On the back of each sheet are two concrete ribs capable of resisting high stresses. When the outer sheet is backed onto the inner one, the ribs meet to form a narrow vertical cavity. This is filled with concrete, making a solid upright and locking the sheets together. The finishing touch is a reinforced band at the top and bottom. By these methods, the framework of an average sized house can be put up in about three days, though roofing and other work has to be done by ordinary means. There's no limit to size and design, and the makers claim it's as cheap as any other way, and fireproof, dampproof, ratproof, and borer-proof into the bargain. With our housing supply at present so far behind the demand, this efficient, speedy method of building is particularly welcome. Young sailors who have just joined the Royal New Zealand Navy are parading at HMNZS Tamaki, the shore training establishment on Motuihi Island near Auckland. It's Trafalgar Day, and these new naval men are honouring the most famous sailor in history, Lord Nelson. As a further tribute, and as a reminder of the great traditions of the service, Nelson's pre-Trafalgar signal is being flown. England expects that every man this day will do his duty. The Navy no longer uses wooden ships of the line but the 20th century sailor still learns his elementary seamanship under sail. These boys are learning quickly, and soon they'll be ready to take their place in New Zealand cruisers and frigates. Though they're mostly destined for big ships, there's no better place for new recruits to get the feel of the sea than in a small boat. At Tamaki, their training is thorough. After a few weeks, they pull an oar like veterans, and remember to say fore and aft, not front and back. There's time off for boxing, an important part of the Navy's physical training program. The bouts only last one minute and they're whirlwind action from start to finish. When one bout's over, another starts right away. 
If you're a bit slow getting into the ring, it's your own fault and you take what's coming. In the evening, the lads can relax, unless there's too much mending to do. At sea, they won't be able to send their washing and dining home to mum, so they get used to doing their own. They also get used to sleeping in a hammock. Why did I ever leave home? It's a bit tricky going to bed in the Navy when you first join, even in a ship that's ashore, but it soon becomes second nature. The boys enjoy the open air life, and after a hard day's training ashore and afloat, even a hammock can feel like a feather bed. In the morning, everyone's up bright and early. They've no option. And the Naval Training Establishment starts its day. They move at the double, for there's a lot of work to do during the short but intensive training period. One class learns to send supplies over rivers or difficult terrain. Then there's always an hour or two of knots and splices, one of the most important parts of a sailor's training, where they learn from the seamanship instructor that there are two ways of tying a knot, the wrong way and the Navy's way. Gun drill is another important item on the syllabus, and although these new entries have been in the Navy only a few months, they man this twin four-inch like experts. Towards the end of the course on Tamaki, the recruits go for a week's cruise on one of the establishment's harbour defence motor launches. It gives them a chance to find their sea legs and to put their theory into practice. New Zealand's insular position and miles of coastline make the Navy important as our first line of defence in an emergency. In peacetime, they carry on quietly, training men to be the most efficient seamen in the world. <laughs>